me babble anymore. So without any further ado, I'd like you all to give a please give a warm Shmukhan welcome to Evan and Rudy. What's up, Shmukhan? Have you ever been in your office around other security-minded people and uh, you notice a trend where people are nervous that their computers are spying on them? Uh, you see tape on, you know, the, the cameras and, and, you know, other, other things, epoxy in the USB ports, but, uh, and I know I'm not the first person to say this, but we all carry these very powerful sensing devices in and around our person. And, um, you know, if you're one of these people who puts tape on your monitor, do you also put tape on your cell phone? And what else do you do to your cell phone? And what are the possibilities for things which can be done to a cell phone, and that's one of the things that we wanted to assess with like a modern iPhone. Uh, so this is uh, iPhone surgery for the practically paranoid. Uh, I'm Evan, and uh, that's Rudy. So uh, this is the way that our uh, presentation is going to shake out. Uh, intros, the problem that we're going to address and, uh, and our goals. Uh, we're going to tear down a phone and uh, uh, talk about some of the things that we learned. So. Uh, I'm Evan Jensen, I'm the CTO of the uh, uh, Boston Cybernetics Institute. Um, I uh, um, like to play CTF. I was the captain of a couple CTF teams. I was the captain of Brooklyn Overflow, which is uh, based out of NYU Tandon from 2012 to 2014. And I was also the captain of uh, Lab Rats from 2014 to uh, 2016. And, uh, I, I, I stopped in 2016. I moved employers and moved across the country. But they went on to compete at DEF CON and do really, really super awesome stuff. Uh, before I was at uh, BCI, I worked at MIT Lincoln Laboratory and on Facebook's Red Team. And uh, with me today is uh, Rudy Cuevas, uh, who is also a uh, employee at BCI, and he's got um, uh, advanced degrees from Cornell University, uh, you know, engineering and uh, computer engineering and all that, all that really awesome stuff. I met Rudy uh, when we were working together at uh, Lincoln Laboratory, and his his background is way more impressive than mine: radar, ballistic missile defense, in addition to the cyber stuff. So, you know, the real deal. So uh, a little bit about uh, BCI. Um, I started this uh, with a couple of people I knew from MIT in 2017, uh, Public Benefit Corporation, and we do uh, consulting and training. Feel free to follow us on Twitter or visit that website, but enough of that. So the problem, right? Like maintaining your privacy is difficult with so many sensors. Um, uh, over, over the past couple of years, there have been no shortage of papers published where people talk about uh, ways to abuse sensors to get information out of them. So uh, this is a list of papers um, that document abuses of sensors, side channels from sensors, uh, where it's very difficult to apply access control. So for example, your gyroscope and your accelerometer, uh, these are things which uh, can be accessed from uh, an unprivileged browser context. So any, any website you get can uh, you know, use a, a JavaScript API to understand the position of your phone. Um, uh, you know, so depending on how sensitive your, your, uh, your sensors are, you can even do things like uh, misuse them. So you can uh, even potentially do something as sophisticated as use a, use a gyroscope as a, um, as a microphone because of the way that the sensor is constructed. So you know, how do you, how do you tape over uh, your gyroscope? Um, that's what we want to understand. So. Um, can you remove these sensors from a phone? What's the impact on the overall functionality to the phone? Uh, can you still have a phone which is useful for day-to-day -day use? And uh, you know, like what's, what's inside those phones? I'd never taken one apart before I worked on this project. I don't know about any of you. So uh, what, what we're talking about in essence here is a, um, a, uh, a trade-off uh, between um, privacy and security and, and functionality, right? So, uh, you know, if you're removing these sensors from your phone, then the features that those sensors power are no longer going to be available to you. But on the flip side, they'll no longer be a, a threat to you. So uh, there have been a couple of articles uh, published about um, using uh, alternative devices uh, for telecommunication, like an iPod Touch, which doesn't have uh, a baseband radio or any of the other fancy stuff in there. So I'm going to turn it over to Rudy, and he's going to talk a little bit about um, the work that we did, the sensors that we were able to remove, and uh, and uh, what, what the outcomes were. Hello, Shmu Khan. Um, so as Evan mentioned, right, like we we're, we we're talking about privacy issues that sort of arise once this information has been created. So we're attacking the problem 
from the standpoint of trying to control the content creation itself. Um, as you mentioned, these, these devices that we have are like full of sensors that can tell everything from like your gate, right? Like they can be used to identify you via your gate, your environment, whether you're in a light place, dark place, loud place, silent place, and so on and so forth. Um, so what we decided to do was to start removing these sensors, right? Like controlling that content creation. And we began by looking at the sixth generation of the iPod Touch, right? So we thought this was, you know, simple enough. It was cheap enough to buy, you know, and burn it and waste it, break a couple if we uh, weren't careful at, at uh, reworking the device. Um, so we started looking at the front camera, rear camera, microphone, gyroscope, touch sensor. Um, the first three we were able to remove successfully, uh, but when it came time to some of the rework, uh, there were, we encountered some issues, and it was more so uh, dealing with the small scale of the rework than the removal of the sensors themselves. Like, we weren't necessarily using the custom, you know, micro soldering hardware or tools and such. Um, but we were confident enough that we could move on to the iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 itself had about 15 sensors that we were looking to attack. Um, and as you can see here, we had pretty good amount of success in terms of removing these sensors while maintaining the device functionality. Uh, the one sensor that we did not attack was the temperature sensor. Um, we didn't touch that, disable that at all. Um, some of the sensors were removed completely, others were sort of simply disconnected, but we will get into that. Um, so now we'll get into like the pretty pictures of all of the teardown. So the way we, in which we proceeded was in order of comp complexity, right? Like least risk to most risk. These iPhone Xs are pretty expensive to start just like burning a whole bunch of them and breaking them and not getting anything out of it. Um, so the, the easiest sensors to begin with were the cameras, right? Those are connected uh, to the system via just press connectors. So like you lift those up, they're disconnected, you can pull them out pretty easily. Um, so we did that with the rear camera set. Um, we also did that with the front camera, which includes the dot projector, uh, the IR camera, and just your front facing camera. Those were the most straightforward to remove, uh, no real issues there. The next thing we wanted to do was sort of attack the sort of um, recording of sound. So we wanted to remove the microphones. Now, the iPhone 10 has three to four microphones, um, depending on which sources you read. So we were able to remove three microphones that were connected to the flash assembly that's at the top. Um, the bottom right, we have the one that's connected to the lightning port, and on the left, towards the bottom, it's the one that's connected to the front sensor array that's attached to the front screen. So that, removing those required applying a little heat with the soldering iron um, and sort of breaking the connections. Those were actually pretty easy to do. So while we were there, we are like, you know what, the light sensor can actually be used to sense your environment as well. Might as well just pull that out. Um, that ended up we, we ended up just like not reconnecting it to the system, not plugging back in the press connector. Uh, the downside here is that you also lose your speaker, but for our testing purposes, that didn't actually matter. Um, if we needed to talk into it, we could use like a Bluetooth headset and so on. Now we started getting into some of the riskier, uh, some of the riskier processes. So what we have here in the picture, depicted um, on the right-hand side, is a top view of the logic board, right? The main logic board of the iPhone is sort of a sandwich board. There are two layers. The top layer happens to contain most of the functionality required to just drive the device, right? So it contains the application processor, memory, so on and so forth. So this is what really is used to turn on the device, interact with the device, and so on and so forth. Um, for the most part, we'll get into those details soon. At the bottom layer, is used mainly for the RF devices, right? Like that's what contains your baseband, GPS, NFC, so on and so forth. Um, here at the top board, like there's it, I'm not sure if everyone can see it well, um, but at the bottom of that L cutout on the right hand side, there is a red square. That red square highlights the barometer. 
So we figured there are two chips on top of the board that you can get to. The barometer and right next to it is the combo accelerometer gyroscope. So we're gonna start there. So here we took the barometer off. That one required a lot of heat. Um, sorry. Uh, and then the next one we attacked was the accelerometer and the gyroscope. So now, uh, when we wanted to try to get to all of the signal generation and so on and so forth, that required separating the sandwich board. Um, the sandwich board is connected by a series of interconnects along the perimeter that provide electrical connectivity between the top and bottom board components. Um, so we, we separated that out and Evan will talk about those results. And then the next, the first thing we attacked on the bottom board was the NFC chip. Um, so now with that said, Evan will get into what happened when we actually removed these components, how the, the iPhone fared and so on and so forth. So we got pretty, pretty deep into this phone and um, the, the results were, were, were fairly successfully removed. Um, uh, a lot of things which are really super straightforward to remove. You just kind of pop off these connectors and then we you know, had, to, had to get some soldering irons out and remove some additional components. And then you know, uh, finally we're delayering, you know, we're separating the sandwich boards and we're pulling the NFC chips off. And this requires more sophisticated kind of um, hot air rework uh, kind of skills. Um, so uh, the good news is that uh, for, for, for the majority of, of this stuff, we were able to maintain um, a, a phone which worked, um, that had all the kind of features that, that you wanted in a phone without um, a lot of this stuff which can be used uh, to, to unmask your identity or uniquely, uniquely identify you or you know, reveal your location without, without GPS or, or things like that. So uh, removing the cameras and microphones, you can see here on the left side of the screen is a, is a GIF of um, what, what the phone does once you've removed the cameras and uh, you, know, you can uh, hit, the, you know, hit, the, hit the button which flips from the front camera to the back camera and it's, it's just black. It's as if you have like a, a piece of tape over your, over your camera. The phone uh, doesn't necessarily give any indication that, um, that, the, that these have been removed, at least at the UI. Uh, on the other side of the screen, we have uh, two iPhone Xs side by side. On the uh, left is the phone which we have modified, and on the uh, right is an unmodified phone. So when you're taking a, a voice memo which leverages the microphones, uh, on a phone where you've removed the microphones, there's an indicator on the GUI that the microphones are no longer there and you can't record. You can record, of course, if you still plug in your headphones and then take a, a voice memo that way, but if you don't have anything plugged into the phone, it will, it will fail. Uh, as I indicated earlier, uh, a, lot of, a lot of these readings can be obtained uh, from a, uh, a browser. So on the right-hand side, uh, you have two iPhone Xs side by side. Uh, the iPhone on the uh, uh, far right uh, is an unmodified iPhone, so you see that the JavaScript is uh, successfully reading out um, details from your accelerometer and your, and your gyroscope. Uh, and on the left uh, is the iPhone um, that we've removed those components from and then you know, reassembled. And you can see that uh, the JavaScript is not able to reveal those values, and it's just saying you know, uh, G or, or degree. And then on the far left uh, is the barometer app, which is, I think, made by Apple, but is not shipped on the phones by default. And um, uh, if you download this app on, on your iPhone, you'll see that you get, uh, you know, pressure readings that are, that are not sort of this, I think, default at sea level um, 1010 uh, HPA reading. And it's, it's grayed out in an unmodified iPhone. It's not gray. But it's, uh, it's failing to get these readings, uh, which is nice because, you know, um, maybe it's like a mental exercise. You can try to imagine how much entropy could be in your air pressure and how many air pressure readings you need to take over a period of time to figure out, you know, who you are as opposed to any other person. So while we were doing this work and we had um, the board open, you know, we, we took that opportunity um, to experiment a little bit. So on the, in the upper left of this photo is the uh, bottom part of the, of the logic board. Uh, and then on the lower left of this photo, we have sort of put together a minimum working uh, iPhone, which uh, is comprised of only the top logic board, which contains the uh, application processor and none of the radio components. 
And um, to that, we've connected the, the battery and elements of the screen and also the, the lightning uh, charging port. And uh, this, thing, this thing boots. Um, and uh, um, it's, uh, it, it's a little challenging to use because there's a very important component which is located in the uh, bottom half of this assembly, which is actually the uh, component which is responsible for uh, interpreting uh, your touch on the screen. So you can't actually um, drive the screen with your finger. Uh, and although we didn't test it, I'm reasonably sure um, that if you hooked up something like an external um, keyboard using the lightning port, because the, the, the lightning port is, is still connected, you might be able to get some usability. But that's not really, you know, this is like a little bit too far on the removal of, you know, application functionality, right? So, you know, ideally to get a phone which you'd be capable of using, which doesn't have below these sensors, you want to dial it back a little bit. Um, but, uh, you, know, um, you know, we then hooked up the sort of power and volume buttons, and you can do the emergency squeeze, and you can see that it's trying to make an emergency phone call. But uh, this, of course, can't work because there's no baseband processor, so it can't talk to any kind of cellular network, and uh, just, it just hangs here until you pull the, you know, lift the battery to turn off the phone. Uh, so I had one of these experiences, maybe you've had them as well, where you, you make a, a mistake and then you hear sirens in the distance. Um, so this, this, this really happened. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was doing this work and I, I was, uh, you know, it was getting late and I was getting hungry and so I went and, um, you know, I, I'm reasonably sure that I sort of turned off all my rework equipment and closed up my lab and then, you know, went to go get dinner and then I was sitting on the second floor of this restaurant and I was looking at the entrance to, to my building and there were police showed up and then the fire department showed up and it made me very worried and then I, you know, stopped eating dinner and I came outside and I smelt you know, what, what my lab smells like, you know, when you're, when you're burning flux, and it's, it's no good. I was very worried, and uh, thank God, uh, you know, there, there, there were no fires, uh, but it, it foreshadowed uh, something which was to come. And so before I talk about the, the mistakes which were made, I just want to talk, you have to really kind of be gentle with your criticisms because I just want to remind you the scale uh, that, that you have to perform your work at on these boards. So this is, this is a... Um, this is a digital caliper, which is measuring a screw, kind of a typical screw that's used in the fastening of an iPhone X. And uh, it's, it's 1.2 millimeters. And, uh, you know, a lot of the components are, aren't, aren't much different from that. And uh, so, you know, uh, I, in the process of rework, you know, I, I lifted something and I nudged something I wasn't supposed to, and then I couldn't, you know, kind of undo it. And uh, the, the, board, the board at that point was ruined. Um, which, you know, like, it's my first time, and the sports are really, really, really tiny, so uh, maybe, 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 you know, if I had another, another iPhone, then things would, things would go differently. But, um, so uh, what, did, what did we learn from, from, from doing this, right? So you can remove basically every single sensor in your phone, and it will still work. Uh, you can even go too far and remove sensors that you really need in order for your, your, uh, your phone to, to work. Uh, some components are a lot easier to remove than others. They all have different risk profiles. So, uh, you know, uh, unplugging the camera, uh, really, really super simple. I think anyone can do this. Um, desoldering your microphones away, also relatively simple. Separating the boards, a lot more involved. And then getting down inside those boards where all those components are really packed in super tightly, extremely complicated. Um, really, really accident prone. Um, I don't think I could recommend a non-expert in good faith. Like attempt it. Um, but for all those other things, right, like if, you know, if we can do it, right, like you also can do it. Like I learned how to do this by just watching a bunch of YouTube videos and, and playing around and, and getting, getting good at the techniques over, over time. So for, um, for some of the future work, right, um, you know, we had an idea of the way this, uh, this project was going to go down when we started, but then once we had, you know, once we had everything open and exposed, targets of opportunity began to, you know, present themselves. So. Um, you know, the, 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 the way the iPhones are constructed through this layer board, um, that interconnect is, is really, really interesting, right? I'd like to develop an interposer for that board. And, uh, you know, the reason why is if you think about it, right, like all of the radio components, the only way they can really talk to the application processor is through that interconnect. And so instead of getting down inside the basin of that lower board to manually remove radio components, what if you just uh, fabricated, like, uh, something which would selectively allow those signals to come through. And then you could even make something like that more advanced where you have uh, uh, switches which you can, you know, selectively and 
you know, enable and disable uh, radios. So um, just wanted to say uh, uh, thank you uh, to everyone who uh, inspired and, and made a lot of this uh, research possible. Um, uh, you know, all of these people are, are really super uh, talented and, and you can find the stuff that they've done online and on, on YouTube and they're, they're much better at a lot of this stuff than, than I am. And uh, that's, that's about all we got. This is a, a photo of the equipment I used to do this work on. It's really not sophisticated at all, right? Like it's a couple hundred bucks anyway. So uh, that's all we got. And I'm more than happy to take any questions if you got them. Yes. So the question was about the, the temperature sensor on the phone. We said in the beginning of the presentation that we did not uh, attempt to modify the temperature sensor, and that's because uh, that temperature sensor is used to govern the CPU. And um, I faced, uh, you know, one, I didn't even attempt to locate it, mostly for fear that if I disrupted it that the, you know, something terrible would happen. Hi. Uh, so I had a question about, so when you, you knew So the question is about the barometer and when you read it, what, what the value is that you get back. So, 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 so that, was a, that was a native app on the phone. And uh, we were doing this on an unjailbroken uh, iPhone. So I can't, I can't tell you what the, what the actual raw reading from the sensor was. Uh, the, the UI was gray where it ordinarily would be white. And so that indicates a sort of sensor failure to me. But what you actually get at the native layer, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think the way to do that would be to jailbreak your iPhone. Yeah, and then um, and then sort of like manually write the code, which would be that sensor. Thank you. Hey.